The greatest gift God has given this world is the precious gift of grace. Please understand that grace is not a teaching. Grace is a person, the person of Jesus Christ. John 1.17 says, For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Open your spirit and prepare to receive, through Bishop Herb Andrew, God's word of grace, which is building you up from the inside out, while positioning you to enjoy the inheritance Jesus paid for with his blood. This is your moment of grace. Hi, I'm Bishop Herb Andrew, and this is your moment of grace. You know, we've been contemplating this awesome relationship that we have with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and how it is that it is so important, even as we walk with him, that we pay close attention to what we hear, and not only what we hear, but how we hear what we hear. In other words, the word of God is so awesome. It has been given as a blessing to each and every one of us. But it's important that we understand that the way we see Jesus or even the way that we hear what he has said, the revelation that we have of who Jesus really is, it never really affects God's acceptance of us. But it always it affects our acceptance of what God has for us. In other words, the way that we see him, the way that we hear his words, the revelation that we have of him, it, it ultimately affects how you and I receive the blessings and the benefits that Jesus has already provided for us in and through his finished work. You know, we've been asking the question based on the conversation that Jesus had with his disciples. You remember the other day how it is that as he walked with his disciples, Jesus began to ask them, who do men say that I am? Some said that you're John the Baptist. Some says that you're Elijah. Then others say that you're just another prophet. But then Jesus asked the question that I believe is most important, and that is, who do you say that I am. And we've been dealing with that now for a couple of weeks because it is so important in this season that we have a revelation of who Jesus really is. Listen, you can't live off the revelation that your mother has. You can't live off the revelation that your pastor or your prayer partner has. It is so important that you and I possess the true revelation of who Jesus really is. I'm talking about the Jesus of the Bible. I told you guys before that this Jesus of the Bible, people who are not like him, they like him because this Jesus of the Bible he is, he is lovely in all of his ways. He is, he is a God of love, grace, and mercy. And who would not want a relationship with, with, a, with a God who would sacrifice all that he has in order to be a blessing and a benefit to our lives? So the question on the table today is who do you say Jesus really is? Is he, is he reactive or is Jesus proactive? That, that, that's a good one. Is, is, is Jesus a reactive God or is Jesus a proactive God? In other words, does Jesus only respond to our requests or does Jesus also respond to our needs? Man, that, that, that's an important question. That, that's something that we need to ponder. Because you remember the Bible over in Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 15, when uh, Jesus was getting ready to uh, feed the, the group of some 4,000 individuals. The Bible says that Jesus called his disciples to himself, and Jesus says, I have compassion on the multitude because they have now continued with me three days and have nothing to eat. And I do not want to send them away hungry lest they faint on the way. So my question to you, 
is, is Jesus reactive or is Jesus proactive? I, I know you and I both have read in the word of God where the Bible says that you have not because you ask not. And the truth of the matter is that, you know, prayer is one of the greatest privileges that we have, the uh, privilege of going to God and and to let our requests be made known unto him. That is such a tremendous privilege to have. But understand, sometimes we don't request what we need, and sometimes we don't know what we need to request. So in those times, my question is, is Jesus reactive or is Jesus proactive? Look at Luke's gospel, chapter number seven. This is a very, very powerful uh, passage of scripture, one that blesses my life every time I read it. Listen to what the word of God says, beginning at the 11th verse. The Bible says, now it happened the day after that Jesus went into the city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him and a large crowd. And when Jesus came near the gate of the city, behold, a dead man was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and a large crowd from the city was with her. Now, now understand what is happening here. Here it is, Jesus now runs into this funeral procession. It's the funeral uh, of a young man who has now gone home. This young man has now lost his life. But the mother, the mother of this young man was already a widow. And as a widow, the only person that she had to take care of her was her son. And now, not only is her husband dead, but now her her son, her her son, her caretaker has now also died. And the Bible says that in the midst of the funeral, the Bible says in verse 13, when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, do not weep. Then he came and touched the open coffin, and those who carried him stood still. And Jesus said, young man, I say to you, arise. Now, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, because this is a funeral. This lady was, was overwhelmed with grief. Her husband is already dead, and now she's on her way to bury her, her remaining caretaker, her son. And, and the Bible says that on the way to burying her son, that the Lord saw her. The Lord had compassion upon her, and the Lord began to move for her benefit. Please hear me today. The way that you see him, the way that you hear him, it will never, ever affect the way that God accepts you. But the way that you see him and the way that you hear him, it will affect your ability to accept that which God has already provided, that which he wants to do for us in and through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In other words, what I'm saying to us is this. To think that Jesus only responds to our requests, it limits his ability to perform in our lives. Now, 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 now understand, I am a prayer warrior. I, I pray often. I pray for myself. I pray for my family. I pray for our church, and I do it on a very consistent basis. But I also understand that, that, that Jesus he, he not only responds to my requests, but Jesus also responds to our needs. 
See, thinking that that he only responds to our request, it really limits what he does in our lives because sometimes we don't know what we need. We may think we know what we need, but sometimes we don't know, we don't request what we need, and then at other times we don't know what we need to request. And it's at these times, it's at times like this when, when, when you have to know in your heart of heart that God sees, that, that, that he has compassion and that he has already moved out addressing the need even before we ask. Listen, y'all, the God that we serve, our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, he is not just reactive, but he also is proactive. Hallelujah. It is so good to know that before the problem even arose, before we saw it in the natural, Jesus saw it, he had compassion upon us, and he's already, he's already addressing the issue even before we ask. You know, the Bible says in Philippians 4 and 19, one of my favorite scriptures, it says, and my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. See, in this season, family, we should release faith not just in a reactive God, not just in a God who will hear and answer our prayers, but we need to release faith in a proactive God, a God who sees and has compassion upon us and who has already gone forth addressing the need even before we ask. Because when we release faith in a proactive God, when we release faith in a proactive Savior, it allows Jesus to, to, to supply our needs according to his riches and glory and not according to our requests. Because sometimes we don't request what we need and sometimes we don't know what we need to request. But because he is a God of grace, because we have this proactive savior, it allows us the assurance of knowing that even before we ask, Jesus sees, he has compassion, and he is already moving out to manifest the victory in every situation of our lives. Now that's Good news. Listen, family, I'm Bishop Herb Andrew, and this has been your moment of grace. Be sure to follow us on our social media platforms by subscribing to our Beacon Light of Homer YouTube channel and following us on Beacon Light of Homer Facebook and Instagram pages. Join us for a life-changing word on Sundays at 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. for our Beacon Light of Homer worship experience or Wednesday on our Grace Reloaded Bible Study at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Bishop Herb would love to hear from you. Leave your comments and be sure to stay connected by subscribing to this Moment of Grace podcast. If this podcast has been a blessing to you, make sure you share it with your friends and loved ones. Remember, because of his awesome grace, our God is faithful to manifest every blessing and benefit Jesus has paid for through his finished work on the cross of Calvary. Our part is to believe, receive, and enjoy what has already been provided, motivated by his tremendous love. Until next time, this has been your moment of grace. Thank you for sharing on today.